In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Today, the church celebrates the feast of St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi is arguably Christianity's most famous saint. People love St. Francis, religious or not. You'll find his statue in people's homes and him as a bird bath in people's gardens. Anyone have St. Francis in your garden as a bird bath? I knew I wasn't alone. That's right, I see you. St. Francis is so popular that he made it into other religious histories. If you read some of the stories from Islam, you'll even find St. Francis there speaking to the Sultan during the Crusades. And St. Francis, he's known for his love of animals. That's why we had the first reading today. He's known for his love of ox, ostriches, and even the swift ass. It's in there. Look it. It's in the Bible. That's why on this feast day, we bless animals, and we'll do so in Medina Park at 1 o'clock today. He also is known for his love of creation, calling the sun, wind, rain, even fire, brother or sister. He's known for his love of the poor and his commitment to voluntary poverty, or as he named it, lady poverty. And he's also known as a peacemaker. And in many, in many ways, he was a man ahead of his time. And if we're honest, he's also known to be, well, a bit crazy, a radical, even an animal lover, living out his faith in extraordinary ways. Yet even as a crazy, radical, fundamentalist animal lover, it's hard not to love St. Francis. He lived out the pure ideals of Christianity. He showed us how to experience God in simplicity and through dispossession. Giving up things was not a burden for Francis, but the path to freedom and joy. As a disciple, Francis showed generations to come what it looked like to love Christ above all things and to love Christ in all things, as one scholar put it. And so this morning, as we transferred his feast day on today's Sunday, I'd like us to reflect on his life through that lens, how Francis showed us how to love Christ above all things and to love Christ in all things. Francis showed us how to love Christ above all things. He showed us how to love Christ above his own wealth, success, and power, things that he had spent his life striving for. Not these things, wealth, success, and power, were bad in and of themselves, but for Francis, they had made it way too far to the top. He had become possessed by his possessions, as that saying goes. And like that Sheryl Crow song goes, if it makes you happy, then why are you so sad? You see, for Francis, he was not happy. Though born of considerable wealth, born in the 12th, 13th century, he was a son of a successful cloth merchant. As a boy, he was taught these values. He was taught to follow in his father's footsteps, make his dad proud. Well, most of the time. That's because St. Francis in his 20s was known as a partier, and he spent all of his dad's money on parties, which drove his dad bonkers. But like the kid Cuddy song, Pursuit of Happiness, which speaks to the elusive quest for happiness, something felt missing in Francis's life. He went looking for the more. The more that Francis looked for was honor and nobility. In the 12th century, if you were not born of nobility like Francis, you could earn it through becoming a um, knight through serving in the military. To become a knight through military service, you first had to become a soldier. So Francis became a soldier and went to war when Assisi had a border dispute with a nearby region. 
And there he quickly became a prisoner of war. And if you were from a family of wealth, you could be um, ransomed as a prisoner of war. And so his father came in for the rescue and ransomed him out, and he returned home. With the honor he longed for, Francis still look went looking for the more. He felt restless. Like that well-known prayer from St. Augustine's book, Confessions, his heart was restless until it rested in the Lord. And while visiting a church in ruins, Francis finally found the more he was looking for. In a church in San Damiano, Francis saw a vision. Meditating on the crucifix, Francis felt like Jesus spoke to him saying, Francis, go repair my house which, as you can see, is falling completely in ruins. Francis took this commission literally. He literally went out and got bricks and started rebuilding it brick by brick. Little did he know that Jesus was calling him to repair the church spiritually, to call the church to needed reforms. And during this time in Francis' life, he began reading the Gospels. He took Jesus' call to sell your possessions Literally, he literally went out and he sold all of his possessions. He was one of our first biblical fundamentalists. Francis began ministering to the poor, to the lepers, and he funded his ministry by selling off his wealth. He went to the extreme and even renounced his family's inheritance. And he did so in dramatic fashion. Imagine this. Francis marches into the middle of the city where he knows his dad is, strips off his clothing, including his family cloak, hands the family cloak to his dad as a symbol, as an act of his renouncing his family inheritance. And this act would free St. Francis to be the person God was calling him to be. It was like he was seen and known as Francis for the first time. For Francis, this is how he received the treasure from today's gospel when Jesus said, one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. One's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. You are more than your things. You are more than your family's net worth. There is eternal value in places where moth and rust cannot destroy. His experience was like the character Molly Wells from the comedy television show Loot. Anybody see Loot on TV? Molly was um, played by Maya Rudolph, and she is a newly divorced 45-year-old woman who searches for her meaning, her purpose in life. Recently divorced from her tech billionaire ex-husband, she becomes the third wealthiest woman in America. And the show chronicles her quest to find herself and her more, her meaning. And the show Molly does this by giving away her money and running a charity. And she begins to find this true treasure that Francis' life spoke to. This experience freed St. Francis to start the community of brothers, which would become the Franciscans. Like the first Christian community mentioned in the book of Acts that we just heard, where no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common, there was not a needy person among them, the Franciscans would do the same. They embraced lady poverty and simplicity as they focus their time to service of the poor. And Francis, he lived his faith, and this faith became known as Franciscan spirituality. And it was known for finding God in the poverty of this life. Think about that. In the poverty, in the material poverty of this life, in the poverty of your body, in the poverty of your soul, to find Christ in the little ones in this world, to find Jesus where there is no power or prestige. Francis lived this way of faith, and he lived it by loving lepers, people with Hansen's disease who were marginalized from his community. He lived this faith out through loving children, animals, creation. 
Francis's spirituality would amplify the voices of children, as we heard in today's psalm, as they put it, out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. Through loving those without power and finding Christ in impoverished places, Francis showed us how to love Christ in all things. And we see Francis love Christ in all things through the stories, the legends attributed to his life. Have you heard of the wolf of Gubbio? Have you heard of Francis preaching to the birds? Have you heard of his conversation with the lepers, how he swooped down from his horse and kissed the hand of a leper? All of these stories attest to the ways in which Francis showed us how to love Christ in all things, and the fruit of that being peace and reconciliation, joy and freedom. So this morning, I'd like to tell you one of my favorite stories attributed to St. Francis that shows us how he loved Christ in all things. Has anyone heard of the story of St. Francis and the wolf of Gubbio? Anybody hear of the story of Francis and the the wolf of Gubbio. Now let me just say, this, this story does not have to be literally true to be true, okay? <laughs> so just come on this journey with me, listen to this story. There was a town called Gubbio in the Umbrian countryside of Italy, and there was a wolf there that terrorized the town. It would go into the town of Gubbio and it would eat up all the livestock, even the people. And the people and the livestock, they lived in fear. They couldn't go on anymore. St. Francis heard of this town's dilemma. So he decided he would go to the town of Gubbio. And so he went, and he decided he would go speak to that wolf of Gubbio. All the townspeople begged him, please, Francis, please don't go and talk to that wolf. You'll get eaten. But he decided he would go. So he went to the wolf. The wolf sees him. The wolf begins to charge at him. Like he's going to have... Francis fries. Yeah, Francis fries. But then the wolf stops because St. Francis says, Brother Wolf, stop. And he makes the sign of the cross. Okay, he said, Brother Wolf, listen here. I understand you're probably really hungry, and that's why you keep eating all this livestock and all these people. But what if the town promised to feed you every day? Would you stop terrorizing them? Would you stop eating all the, the children and the adults? Yeah, adults. And the livestock, the birds. And the, and the wolf puts his little paw in Francis's hand. This is in the story. And, and agrees. <laughs> From that day forward, both sides kept their side of the deal. No livestock, no person was eaten by this wolf. And the wolf had a full belly. St. Francis showed us how through loving Christ in all things, we can love the hangry out of this world. <laughs> we know there's a lot of hangry in this world today, and sometimes people just need us to put out our hand as healing balm to them, bless them, and see their need and offer it. In a world that is yearning for meaning and purpose, in a world where all of these things are competing for our identity and sense of value, the gift that St. Francis offers us is to bring us back home and to remind us of our true worth, that our life is more of the abundance of possessions. His love of Christ, above all things, was not a straight-out rejection of the material world. So don't, don't hear that in his life but rather the proper ordering of things in the world beneath his love of Christ. Rather, it was the putting back into order of his life. He was holding on to the things of this world lightly so that he did not find himself grasping at the eternal measures, the meaning of his worth through them. For Francis, he had become possessed by his possessions of wealth, success, and power, and his rejection of those things was the path to his freedom in Christ, getting rid of the distractions, getting rid of all those things that competed for his true sense of meaning and purpose. He was able to make room for God. 
And he showed us how to take joy in the little things and in the little ones of this world, showing us how to love Christ in all things, by loving his sister moon and brother sun, by preaching to the birds, by kissing those hands of people that the world would say, keep out. He showed us how to love. I wonder, if St. Francis were to come into this church, if he were to come into the, through those doors, if he were to come through the doors of your heart and soul, what invitation would he have for each one of us to love Christ more fully through loving Christ above all things and loving Christ in all things? May we follow in the footsteps of Francis, who followed in the footsteps of Christ, preaching the gospel at all times and using words only when necessary. Amen.